If you are in a place where it is comfortable and appropriate for you to do so, go ahead and close your eyes and take a few slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light filling your body and mind. With every exhale, feel like you're able to let go of all tension in anything you do not want. Each inhale brings more peace, and each exhale gives you the opportunity to allow gravity to just take away from you all tension in anything you do not want. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. Inside of the sacred grove, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it easily burns away everything that is not like itself. Into this sacred space, we invite the presence of our Creator. To many of us, our Creator reveals themselves as a mother and father, a god and goddess. Into this space, we also invite the presence of our teachers, our angels, and guides. We dedicate the time that we now spend together to them and to each other. We ask that we be guided and led as we walk upon the way, that we become happier, more peaceful, more prosperous, more joyous, and more loving people. Thank you very much. And if it's appropriate for you to do so, out loud, say blessed be. We spoke a a week or two, three ago, about will and how important it is to develop your magical will. Today I want to look at another idea in regards to will, and that's the divine will. A lot of times what happens when something tragic comes along, maybe somebody dies or somebody loses something or somebody gets divorced, something tragic happens, somebody will invariably, in a way that they're trying to create some sense of meaning or purpose or comfort, will say things like, it must be God's will. And I understand where people like that are coming from, but we have to understand that it's not God's will that we have suffering. It's not the will of the divine that people die. It's not the will of the divine that people lose their jobs. It's not the will of the divine that there's catastrophes or hurricanes, or global warming, or any of those things. To say that that's God's will is just a way that we can maybe try to contextualize it so that it doesn't feel so bad. But we have to come to this understanding that God is not out to get us. When I say God, as we said at the beginning in the the meditation, that we're talking about however that force reveals itself to you. For many of us, that's God and goddess. So I could easily say goddess. But I'm saying God in a non-gender specific manner, okay? So just use that and reinterpret it in a way that works for you. God's not out to get us. Once we really understand that not only is God not out to get us, but that God is eager to help us, things seem different. Things work differently in our lives. When we encounter bad behavior, I don't know, maybe genocide, people will say, how could God allow something like that to happen? And that's not the question. It's not how could God allow that to happen. It's how could we allow that to happen? When there's hunger in the world, why does God allow so much hunger and so many children dying of starvation? That's not a very appropriate question. The question is, how can we sit back and allow all those children to go unfed when there is no lack or shortage of food on the planet? How could God allow poverty? Well, how can we allow for all of this poverty? How can we sit back and allow for all of this poverty? That's a better question. 
God can only do for us what God can do through us. It's very important to, to understand the world that we experience is not of God's making. It's of our making. We either want free will or we don't. Do you want to be an automaton where, where God's will comes through you and you have no choice and you can't do what you want to do? You can't think what you want to think? Well, the responsibility is upon our shoulders when we want freedom to use that freedom in a way that is in alignment with the will of the infinite. Otherwise, we're at odds with the will of the infinite. We're at odds with the will of the infinite. So if for some reason our world doesn't look so rosy, to say, oh, God's punishing us or God doesn't love us, we don't put that on God. We can't blame that on God. God gave us every resource that we need to create as heavenly of an experience as we can possibly have here. And this is what we do with it. This is what we do with our minds. This is what we do with our freedom. This is what we do with our creativity and our powers. And so then what happens is we look out on the world and we say, eh, it's horrible. I must be powerless. You know, like washing our hands, <laughs> washing our hands from all culpability. I must be powerless. We have to understand that we personally sometimes don't have power over certain things, but we collectively sure do. Collectively, we certainly do have a lot of power over things. The more that we blame God or blame divine will for being against us, the more we are allowing ourselves to remove ourselves from any responsibility for what we see before us in our personal lives, in our global lives, in our communities, in our families, in our relationships. There's a difference between taking responsibility for something and taking blame for it. Blame is kind of a pointless topic, unless you are in a court of law. It's really pointless for us to think, well, they're to blame, he's to blame, she's to blame, when we already have something going on that's negative. Taking responsibility for it is much more powerful because we can say, well, this is what I've got. I've got a mind. I've got resources. I've got powers, God-given powers. So what am I going to do about it? What am I going to do about this? And you can ask. You can ask to be guided and led in each and every moment based on the decision that you're making. But it's got to be the decision that you want to have responsibility for what you see. You've got to want that. God's not going to say, no, you got to take responsibility for this. God's sitting there patiently waiting for us to ask for help. God is sitting there patiently waiting us, waiting for us to take responsibility and to own our power and to become one with our power. This idea that I'm powerless is a delay tactic that our egos use. It's a, it's a tactic of delay so that we can stay mired in the illusion. So what we can do is regardless of what we think we have power over, we can just assume we have infinite power over this situation. We can assume that whatever it is that we're looking at, if it's not in alignment with God's will, it will be apparent because it won't feel good. It won't look good. So we can make the decision that we are going to align with infinite intelligence, the will of the divine, in regards to this situation, and then be guided and led every step of the way as to where our power does lie, right? So when we put ourselves in alignment with infinite will and ask that we be used as an instrument for infinite will to heal a situation, our abilities, our power, and our part in that situation's healing will be apparent to us if we decide we want to see it that way. But it's a lot easier, we think, many of us to say, oh, I'm powerless. What can I do? Isn't that bad? Oh, those people, or oh God, or oh this, or oh that, blame, 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 blame. We have to learn to make decisions in the moment based on what it is that's not working in our lives and in our worlds that we are willing to be used as a vehicle and conduit for the divine will to come through us to heal the situation. And a lot of times what happens is little tiny things. Once we do that little tiny 
actions are going to be given to us are going to be, we're going to be guided do this go here go there go here go there and it to us from our point of view it seems so insignificant all of the little things that we're doing that well how could this help what will this make any difference with we don't ever know how those little tiny actions, tiny shifts in awareness, tiny little shifts in understanding of, of, uh, of how to approach things and how to respond to certain things, we don't understand how significant those seemingly small little actions actually are because they can cause massive chain reactions. You know, that if you look at a nuclear reactor... When when there's a when there's a negative chain reaction in there, it's such a tiny little thing that starts it. It's so tiny. It's because it's nuclear, right? It's just this tiny little itty bitty itty bitty particle ha- having some sort of activity that causes this chain reaction that can make something really awful happen. In the same way, from Divine Will's point of view, these little tiny itty bitty atomic little changes in our behavior and in our understandings of things can cause massive chain reactions for good. But God never comes in uninvited. God never really steps in and intervenes because that's, if you think about like Star Trek, that's like the prime directive. No, we're not going to intervene. This is their free will. Well, that's, that's how the divine is. That's divine will for us. We have free will to use our minds however we want to. So we can create these nightmare scenarios on this planet that go to very, very low depths. And a lot of times, just like with addictions and alcoholism and things like that, we have to hit rock bottom before we start to rethink things and say, well, maybe this isn't working so well. As soon as somebody hits rock bottom, they come to an understanding that they don't know what the heck they're doing and that their way doesn't work. And then they ask for a higher power to come in and shift things for them, to reorient them, so that they can return to sanity. And that's exactly what tends to need to happen for most people. But it's not necessary. That's oftentimes the only way that we are willing to give up our ego in favor of of a better way is when nothing else is working, when we are at the end of our tether. And obviously, that's what's happening here collectively. We have to get to the end of our rope before we, as a species, start to ask for something higher. But by the same token, we can individually allow ourselves to align ourselves with divine will, make that choice now. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. My choices seem to be faulty, but I am willing to be used as a conduit for divine will. I'm willing to be shown. I'm willing to be taught. I'm willing to be part of the chain reaction for good that heals everything. I'm willing for that to happen. And I'm going to commit and dedicate myself to that every single day. I'm going to remind myself every every single morning that I am a willing participant in the healing of the in the world. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't understand it, but I'm willing to be there. I, I definitely would rather do that than my little small will that's doing nothing more than contributing to the problem. I'm, I'm definitely much more interested in being part of the solution rather than the problem, but I don't understand what that looks like, but I know that it can happen. So then when we do that, then we start that chain reaction. I should say God starts that chain reaction, but we're part of that chain reaction that pours through the entire group mind of humanity and of the planet. I'm willing to be part of that. And then we don't have to wait until 1145 or 1155 or 1159 for the miracles to happen, right? Because we are learning how to align ourselves with a higher will. To wait around and expect God to do it, it's like the same habit of somebody else will do the dishes, Somebody else will take out the trash. Somebody else will recycle. They call that let George do it. Eh, let George do it. I don't feel like doing it. Let let George do it, right? Well, George isn't doing it. God's not going to do that. God doesn't just come in uninvited, but God will come in invited. So if we invite ourselves, like I said before, to be the conduit for that chain reaction, then divine will can work through us. God can only do for us what God can do through us. And if we're letting George do it, then God can't do anything through us. 
like with climate change, it's probably not that you personally, your recycling, if it was just a little bit better, then all of the climate change would be better. That's probably not true. See, that's us making a decision about what's going to fix something. That's us. That's the best we can come up with. Whereas if we say, I don't know how things are going to change. I don't know, but I know that God's will 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 change it because God already has a plan. God already knows what this should look like. So if I'm willing to to just be the conduit through which that will can manifest, I know that I will be led and guided step by step by step and that a chain reaction can happen. If we talk to ourselves like that every single day and then are willing to do those little steps each and every day, what a difference that is. And yeah, maybe it does include recycling better. Maybe it does include some of those personal habits that that need to be changed. But a lot of it is consciousness. A lot of it happens not so much on the level of behavior, but on the level of consciousness, on looking at things differently, seeing things differently, being shown what things mean rather than the, the, the meanings that we've assigned to things. Get into the habit of, of just assuming that your personal small will doesn't know anything, doesn't know anything other than what it's been poorly, poorly taught. If we get into that, that habit of just assuming, I don't know what any of this means, none of it. So how do I know how to respond to this? How am I supposed to know how to respond to it? Since I don't really understand any of it, it's all nonsense. Since the beginning of my life here, I've been taught incorrectly based on other blind people trying to teach other blind people what is really there when it's not there because we can't see it because we're all blind together, willful blindness. Instead of that, I can look at the world and say, I don't know, all of this is an illusion. I don't understand any of it, but I'm willing to see it for what it is. I'm willing to be shown. But I know that based on my skewed and incorrect perceptions of things, that the decisions that I make and the responses that I will have to certain circumstances are always going to be wrong. There's a much better chance that I will win the Powerball then I will get it right by myself. But if I align to divine will and I ask to be shown and guided and led and I practice and practice and practice day in and day out, listening to that inner voice and following that guidance one little step at a time, doing what is in front of me to do with poise and dignity, I know that not only will my personal life move into higher and higher expressions of joy, but I will be part of that divine chain reaction that can heal all of the planetary woes that we are experiencing right now. I know that sounds a little too Pollyanna for many people. It sounds a little bit too over the top that such ideas could work. But again, If your will was so hot, your life would be awesome right now. If our collective mind was so smart, the planet would thrive. If the collective mind was so smart, and that is the collective of all of our individual egos, if that worked out so well, the first day that somebody told us that burning fossil fuels was going to cause climate change, that day those things would be outlawed and we would find an alternative that day. And everybody would agree. They'd all say, yeah, but no, that's not how we work. (laughs) That's not how we work. We don't work like that. So you just have to assume, no matter how well-meaning you think you are, you just have to assume that you don't have what it takes all by yourself as an individual ego to make that big of a difference. And none of us do. And as a collective, none of us have what it takes. But There is divine will, and divine will just needs permission. It just needs a willing vehicle and vessel, and you can be that. 
And you can be that. And you don't need to judge by appearances. You don't need to look and say, oh, no, we're going worse. Oh, we're going better. And you don't need to, to, to remind God what we need. You don't need to remind God how fast things need to happen. You don't need to re- remind God anything. All you have to do is say yes. All you have to do is say yes. I am willing for divine will to work through me here and now. I don't know what anything is. I don't know how to fix anything. I don't know how to respond to these situations. That's a high place to be. I don't know. But I'm willing to be shown. I'm willing to be guided. I am willing to be directed. Huge difference, isn't it? It seems like we should be insulted by this idea that we're not that smart. We don't know anything. We, we don't understand anything. That, that should be insulting to us, right? But that's only from the point of view of the ego. From the point of view of the soul, it's like such a relief. Ugh, thank goodness I don't know anything. Ugh, <laughs> thank goodness I don't have to have it all figured out. Thank goodness I don't have to know. Thank goodness all I have to do is be shown. Thank goodness all I have to do is follow the leader. Right? Now, following the leader is something that is so negative to the ego, but we do it all the time. It's just that we always follow the wrong leaders. We always want to follow some cult leader, some political leader, some religious leader, some this leader, some that leader. That's not the leader. The leader is infinite intelligence. The infinite will will lead us and guide us one step at a time. That's the lead that we want to follow. Now, of course, when you when you say, yes, I want to be guided. Yes, I want to be led. Yes, I want to be a conduit for infinite will to work through me. Very oftentimes, you will be guided to certain books. You will be guided to certain teachers. You will be guided to certain systems that are appropriate for you you to work and do things in. Absolutely. But do you see that it's not a a needle in a haystack anymore? You're not just like chancing upon those people, chancing upon those systems. You're being guided there purposefully. And when you're part of that chain reaction, you never know what's going to happen when you say yes to infinite will. You never know, but it's something's going to happen. You're going to meet somebody in this so-called chance meeting, where everything clicks and something happens. And it's so interesting because not only are your personal goals being met and your personal uh, things that that are important to your personal life here uh, improving, but like I said, you're part of a chain reaction that's including the entirety of the planet and the entirety of the species. The meek shall inherit the earth because their strength takes it over. So meek means I'm following infinite intelligence's lead rather than thinking all by myself, thinking I'm so smart. That kind of arrogance that I know better than the infinite is the problem. Now, once you understand that and you really allow yourself to be guided and led and a conduit for a a higher will than yours, then you're shown not only are you are you doing well because you're being guided and led, but the you that you thought you were is not the you that you think you are. The you that that you think that you think you are is completely different than the you that you truly are. The you that you truly are is pretty vibrant, <laughs> is pretty amazing, is big, is huge, is capable of making massive miraculous changes just by your by, by your sheer presence. But you will never find that you when you are constantly at the effect of the small you that is trying to convince you that its personal little agenda is the answer. When we're working with infinite divine will, we are working with the power of the creator of the entire universe that knows exactly what everything needs at every moment of time and point of space. And you can be part of that that healing. You can be part of that great rush of healing and correction in this world, in this, on this planet, right now, if you want to be. But you have to, in order to get that, you have to realize that your small ego mind doesn't know anything. It just thinks it does. And it's got you snowed and it's got you stuck. So assume when you look out into the world that none of it is what you think it is. None of it looks the way you think it looks. None of it sounds the way you think it sounds. And most importantly, none of it means what you think it means. 
And, and if you start from that, if you start from that premise, then it's a slate that is clean. That's called the, that's becoming like a little child in the Bible or in Zen, empty rice bowl. Then you're starting from, from square one where you're saying, God, show me. Show me where to go, what to do, how to be. Show me who I really am in each and every moment. And then you're guided and you're led and you're part of that massive chain reaction. And that massive chain reaction can happen where things get healed and changed in the, in the blink of an eye, in a flash, in ways that we never thought were possible. Blaming God for things is misunderstanding what divine will is. Allowing divine will to work through you is beginning to understand what divine will is. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.